All right, we're back. Another episode of the Sab Powers Podcast. First time with somebody while they're driving. <laughs> AJ Jaritzma. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> What's up, brother? Yeah, you did. That's actually really impressive. Thanks, buddy. How's it going, man? It's good, buddy. I'm just, you know, living the dream right now. It's on a little cruise. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for doing this, man. Rocking the Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. Love it. You have to, right? You got I don't even them. watch sports. <laughs> well, fuck them. But it's good to support the home team, you know? Like, I, I watched uh, the Raptors last year. Yeah, yeah, me too. I was actually in uh, Abbotsford with uh, with uh, J.O. and uh, his homie Ethan, and we caught the, the finals game when they won it out in Abbotsford while we were waiting for somebody at the airport for uh, uh, King of the Dot event out there. So it was a pretty dope atmosphere. It's one of the coolest sports bars I've ever been to, definitely. They had like a Jumbotron-style uh, TV screens above the bar, so it was really pretty fucking dope experience to watch a win like that. That's sick, man. Fuck, it was crazy, bro. Yeah, no, it's fun. it's always good to see something that uh, that we can rally around. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I know, you know a lot of people talk shit about what they call bandwagon fans, but I mean bandwagon fans essentially is just a bunch of people that just got amped up about something that they weren't before, mm-hmm. which I think is a pretty cool fucking thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I guess I'm a bandwagon fan for fucking the Raptor shit because I was never into that before they were like. Before, until last year, right? But like now, it's like I kind of want to catch a game every once in a while. Well, even me too. I've always loved basketball, but I didn't bother paying attention. And then this year, I paid a whole lot more attention. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm a diehard by mm-hmm. any means, but I'm also not gonna pay full price for my jerseys. I'm gonna order from order them from China like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'll show my support in my way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're still advertising the team, right? Yeah, yeah. Just doing it for a third of the cost, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you got a Sam Powers jersey from China, I wouldn't be mad, yeah, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, you're still promoting, right? I mean, yeah. ideally, if, uh, if we're talking about a local team, maybe I'll support the team. If it's mm-hmm. helping the kids get their, get their equipment, you know what I mean? Sure. But uh, I don't need to feed millionaires, you know what I mean? They need to fucking throw me a little bit of food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, you, uh, you got any rap battles coming up? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm supposed to be. I, I have a, a flight arranged for a Halloween battle where we're doing a uh, an event out there, but I haven't seen any promo done for it yet, so I'm just still kind of waiting to hear what's happening with that. So I'm kind of, uh, I don't know if I should talk too much about it just in case it doesn't turn out or whatever, right? But Yeah, it's going to be in, a, in like less than two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's like a week Saturday, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to hear something soon about that because it, it's a really cool event. It's basically a lot of uh, uh, everybody that's on the card is is in character. They're in costume. They got a professional makeup artist coming and all that. So mm-hmm. everybody's battling as somebody against somebody. And I and I was the only fortunate person that had enough of a character that they asked me not to be in 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 a costume, and they want me in uh, in my personal persona taking on the uh taking on somebody that is in a costume for some comical uh but it's a really dope idea it's a really funny concept like i said i just don't know if i'm going to talk too much about it mm-hmm. just because of the fact that i'm not 100 percent sold on whether it's going to be a thing right now they just think your face is scary enough you don't need to dress up eh? no no it's a very terrifying thing that's for sure <laughs> especially this light right now god damn no i'm just kidding buddy <laughs> <laughs> Just real quick, uh, after this hill, I might have to make a two-car pass, but I just wanted to let you know, like, if, if something goes wrong, I'd give you full permission to try to go viral if, if God forbid. Oh, jeez. Gonna... Oh, my God. <laughs> for, for your sake and mine, let's go viral with it, right? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, but these don't guys risk it for the on. meme. These guys got hazards on, and they're doing 60 on a fucking highway, so, like, the two-lane pass is happening. The two-car yeah. pass has to happen. Mm-hmm. They're basically telling me to. They want me to fucking gun it and see what happens. But I'm going to wait and I'm going to do it safely, okay, kids? If you're watching at home. Yeah, oh, you got to do it safely. In a safe <laughs> location. Who's uh, who's your favorite battle rapper, man? Overall, like, I think I would have to say Pat Stay. That was the guy that, when I started watching him, it was like, holy shit, this is, you know, a lot different than what I what I knew it as before, you know? Like, I got introduced, I, I first ever started watching Reed Dollars, and back then I was so young and naive, and I didn't really know much about the whole art form that 
I thought it was just random guys meeting up in record shops and fucking battling, right? I didn't know there was organization until I stumbled across the league out in Vegas, the uh, A-Hat the, uh, Vegas division. That's when I found out that people actually organized this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then once I once it became a, a very big interest of mine, then I had a friend turn me on to King of the Dot. And basically, Pat Stay was where I was like, okay, I, like this shit's real, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Moonwalk with steel toe boots on. Yeah. <laughs> also, just his, his his ruthlessness is something that I love to do. That was my favorite part about battling. It's always been the no limits, say whatever you want to say kind of thing. Because mm-hmm. it was always about my place when I wanted to go exercise demons, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, battling is it's so unique in so many different ways. It's And that's, like, the only time that you can ever say some super – fucked up shit to somebody and it's it's yeah. fine. and then, and then them, them still like you after i can't tell you yeah. the amount of friendships i have with people who i said some of the most demeaning horrible horrible fucking things to mm-hmm. and also on top of that i always found that for me it was like i would embody a a amplified by a hundred version of myself to a point where it's like you know some of my most uh, uh over the top stuff in no way is that anything that i stood behind or believed in but by being so vulgar and so over the top and and terrible in those situations i found that it helped me so much in my personal life of of not being uh an angry or violent person outside of the platform because i had the platform to to go to the furthest extent possible it gave me that room to to grow outside of it we're going for the pass, by the way. All right. Fuck these guys. Fucking pussies. <laughs> I had to. I just got. I was dead because I kept getting the fucking curves of the highway. I couldn't get. I couldn't mm-hmm. do it safely, and I had one chance. I had to fucking capitalize. Yeah, man. I'm happy it worked out. Okay, we did yeah. it. We did it, you guys. <laughs> Everything is good. Yeah. <laughs> no death video. That means we're not going viral with this podcast, unfortunately. Hey, we still might, buddy. You never know. Still hey, might. Well, yeah, yeah. It's in the air, right? Yeah. Who cool. else you might be flipping out? I wouldn't mind now knowing who, who was your favorite battle to watch. Uh, that's a good question. Like, I really like Sharon. He was, yeah. like, one of my favorites for a long time. Yeah, just, a lot, especially because we watched that guy grow, right? Yeah, and, like, just his, like, freestyles are so good, you know? Like, he had just some of the craziest flips ever. Absolutely, yep. Uh, to this day, my favorite rebuttal ever probably was him against Arsenal with the, the BET shit. They hate what I do. I never said they're a racist. I can only speculate on their views. But you uh, you went to Freestyle Friday, lost in week six. What I'm saying is true. So how does it feel to know that a white boy from Canada made it further in black entertainment than you? Like, oh, that was shit. The craziest rebuttal, arguably, of all fucking time. Yeah. Uh, that- it was also what taught me about the concept of a pre bubble about anticipating your opponent's material and having a loaded gun waiting to blow his fucking head off with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was something I remember the first part, I'm like, yo, he definitely had that prepared. And then I thought, at first, I was like, as if I was salty, like, oh, that wasn't a freestyle rebuttal. But then I thought, dude, this guy is literally so fucking prepped for his game that he's he's already anticipating and ready to fucking attack. I'm like, that's something I need to implement. And now, ever since mm-hmm. then, just about every battle I've gone to, I like to have at least about three or four sometimes of, of prepared responses for what I would expect to say. For what I expect to hear, sorry. Yeah, that's really fucking smart. You're like, it's kind of like you're playing the game like like chess or whatever, two steps ahead or whatever. You know, Absolutely. thinking about their moves too, not just your own moves. You're bringing AR-15s to a knife fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, shit like that can win you the battle. Like, uh... Oh, bro, 100%. I've judged many, many battles throughout my traveling and stuff. And, honestly, if there's a very even battle that's going... Like, there are both of them are absolutely killing it. If somebody has rebuttaled once, twice, or maybe, like, or like once or both opportunities, mm-hmm. that will honestly be the swaying factor for me in a lot of cases where it's like, okay, like, that was the one thing that he did that set him apart, right? So, like, even if it's just a little rebuttal on a very very tight battle it's enough to really sway you over it's like, okay this guy had you know something extra to contribute there mm-hmm. and like with like uh i just watched disaster against frack and yeah. like i felt like the paper thing was just like body bags he predicted Dude, that, I, yeah I, that was the only clip I caught of it, to be honest. I fucked up and missed the whole event. But I caught that, and I thought, wow, that is the most flawless fucking rebuttal I've ever seen. 
Yeah, because it's like what you were saying before. It's like a not really a rebuttal. It's like a pre-buttal. And that yeah, one yeah. is so obvious because he b- literally brought another piece of paper. Because he knew. The fact that he anticipated not only fucking the, uh, that him doing that, like, oh, man, that was so special. And, like, that mm-hmm. kind of goes hand in, like, the same way, like, you know, like, where I, I literally learned that preparation from watching how I mean, impressive Sharon's was. And then, like, seeing him do that, too, it's like, holy fuck, right? It's, it, it's just another testament to the envelope always being pushed further, right? Mm-hmm. And people see something and say, okay, let me see what I can do with that, right? The one thing that, like, I've always hated about battling, it, though, is, like, once you do like once you battle someone it's like it's gone forever it's like you can't reuse that stuff yeah absolutely yeah, i know and you know what the worst part too is like i've done like uh, uh somewhere between 40 and 50 i think closer to 50 ish now holy and, shit yeah to try to rack your brain like dude like there's opponents i don't even remember let alone material that i used right so god yeah. forbid i fucking you know what i mean and the last thing i want to do is recycle and then you know i find too is uh, one of the biggest uh, things that always pissed me off when i would be prepared on time and i'm rehearsing constantly like you know many times a day and then i start thinking my material is overplayed it's been said too much i start thinking somebody else said it before me because i've just heard it so many times throughout my practicing right Mm -hmm. so that kind of can get into the head as well there's been times where i like i started to convince myself it wasn't my own or that it wasn't good enough anymore and i was like i'm not asking somebody for their opinion because god forbid they tell me i'm right i still had like you know inside of me i was still like no i think it's good i think it is right there's always that fight so i was like you know what fuck it go with it so i haven't been disappointed yet from that but but it's always a factor in the mind when you're prepping right yeah for sure i've had that exact same thing where it's like yeah once you just keep saying it to yourself over and over again you get sick of it right yeah. it's like that with comedy too right so it's like I get so sick of my own jokes sometimes. <laughs> but to someone that's never heard it before, it's like... Yeah, it's and then like, it reminds you, and that's a very warming feeling when it hits. Mm-hmm. And you're like, holy shit, that just fucking hit, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And then, that also, it also brings up another thing that I always found so fascinating about the art form is I'll have a line prepared where I'm like, yo, this is arguably the greatest line I've ever written. I'm like, this is fucking amazing. And almost crickets, like nobody nobody got it nobody picked up on it like what the fuck was that and then i'll have mm-hmm. a line that i thought about cutting because i thought no nah, it's not there it's not that good and all of a sudden the rumor rocks and it's just the greatest thing they've ever heard right yeah exactly it's so weird <laughs> you never know until you try it out so, mm-hmm. one thing i want to talk to you about too if this is okay if i take the reins for a moment that uh the the murder family joke that you had yeah uh, buddy I, enough props i can't tell you how many people i've shown it to i can't tell you how many times i personally watched it and like the first time i saw it come up in my news feed i thought oh no i'm like how the fuck is this guy gonna make it funny because i watched that documentary and it was one of the most yeah. disgusting things i've ever seen i like i was so enraged right by the whole fucking idea of this guy and mm. then i i got so I'm like you know what i'm gonna give him his chance let me let me give this a watch and i turned it on and I absolutely fucking died. And honestly, like, I was, to me, that's, like, that's so impressive. The writing on that is so impressive. For you to take something that I was scared to watch and think, like, how the fuck can this be funny and literally make it so ridiculously funny, I thought that was some, one of the most impressive jokes that I've ever fucking heard, to be honest with you, buddy. Thank you so much, man. That means so fucking much. I really appreciate throw, that. To throw the Spider-Man quote in there like that, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't enough already. And then, uh, and then especially the part two about uh, about the uh, anytime a girl said you can't handle this pussy, she was looking out for me. Yeah. Like, that, that's the comforting. That's the comfort zone that I'm gonna live in for the rest of my life now. And I thank you for giving me that. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. Yeah. She was just. That's all oh thanks man yeah i'm really happy that that's like one of those things where it's like i didn't even know if i should say that because i was like Uh, am i going too far (laughs) you said said, i did not expect this to go this well i was like yeah no fucking doubt buddy (laughs) especially in today's climate where they don't want comedy to be funny anymore right yeah but it's that's what i like doing is taking something that's like really sad and like somehow making it funny right that's how i deal with sad shit and i had the same feeling as you when i saw the documentary i was like so fucking like i was like how did this even fucking happen like it makes no sense it's you can so abandon fucking, your family. It's yeah. not a good thing to do, but you can do that if mm-hmm. you want to. If you decide this family isn't cutting it for me, I want a new one. 
it, nobody can technically stop you from doing that. You did mm -hmm. not have to do that and go to that length, right? So yeah, I know it really like, I can't even express enough though, to turn something so horrible to something so fucking funny. It was, it was truly remarkable to watch, but. Thanks man, thank you. I really yeah. appreciate that a lot. Pretty much every, every person that I've hung out with since I watched it, it's like, I'm like, oh, you gotta watch this. My, uh, remember my friend we picked up the other day when I bumped into you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, Remember the guy in the car? She's like, guy in the car. I'm like, yeah, the guy in the car. When I didn't have my truck one day, I picked you up. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you got to watch this fucking video. And like, she even, because I, I, I watched the documentary with her, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, remember this? I'm like, watch this, right? And we had a fucking, we had a good laugh again, right? And then, yeah, like pretty much every person that I've, that I've shared a few moments with that isn't overly sensitive, I'm like, hey, take this in with me. Yo, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, bro. You're the I, fucking I, I, man, dude. Enough that I could plagiarize it very easily. You know yeah. what I mean? I think I've got it memorized. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to start saying it. <laughs> you see a video of me popping up trying stand up. You mind your business, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah. man. Truly tremendous stuff, man. I was really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. Fucking, you should shout out, like, all your shit fucking everywhere people can follow you whatever anything you want to promote yeah yeah no i should definitely get some stuff that people can follow um <laughs> <laughs> well at I've least like biggest... watch your battles yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no i've been the biggest procrastinator in that department as far mm -hmm. as organization but uh yeah so basically i do have like obviously i just got my regular facebook where i i tend to share the battles i had a group actually and once upon a time that i've I intended on, uh, you know, really carrying out. Uh, but as far as the battle we go, like I accepted this one for Halloween. That is like more or less just a lot of fun. Go drop some acid in Alberta and fucking hang out with the friends, right? Um, but as of right now for battle, and I'm kind of more thinking about dialing back. So mm -hmm. I do have a bunch of songs that are in the works that I'll be uh, that I'll be releasing over the next bit. And oh, dope! My birthday coming up in December. I'm planning on doing a uh, a debut show called Sorry for the Wait, which literally is a direct uh, reference to my procrastination issues because I've been talking and talking about oh I'm going to do this going to do that for so so long and if I'm being completely honest there was an idea last year right around my birthday for a show called sorry for the wait and uh, <laughs> I saw fit to make them wait a little bit longer but I find that I've just been a little bit over uh, over critical about the finished products so I've had a bunch of songs done and I'm like uh oh, maybe a little bit better maybe a little bit better but yeah god willing this time is actually going to happen Sick, bro. I'm excited, also, man. That's dope. I, also, I should also promote, I, I started a clothing line called Walking Contradiction. And uh, where that stems from is basically kind of touches on what I said earlier about how I would get into the, the ring and I would get crazy and I would just, you know, become this, this absolute animal that didn't care about any human life. And the Walking Contradiction thing started as a line. I think I had a line referenced in one of those battles that I forgot about, about you know, be essentially being a walking contradiction because, you know, you'll see me walk into the ring and I'll say this horrible, horrible stuff. But yet outside of it, I, you know, I pride myself on being a very, very decent person and, and very much being a polar opposite of, of a lot of those stances that I take, you know, or like, you know, it ties into the comedy, which I've been um, uh, looking to get into as well, where it's like a lot of time what I joke about is, is the opposite of how I feel, right? Same with like, you know, to make something funny out of something so sad, which is such a, a natural response to something so hard. It's like, let's make light of it. Let's make a joke of it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's laugh at our laugh at our weaknesses. And, uh, and that all kind of ties right into that same concept of this walking contradiction as well, right? And then uh, further than that, I want to make it more of a universal thing where as like, that's what it mainly mean, meant to me, but it's also about defying odds, breaking standards, right? Like, uh, you know, like it could represent to to individuals just about whatever whatever they see whatever resemblance they can find in it right so i i do have the i do have a, uh, the first edition of shirts available which i'll be posting over the next few days i should be posting a uh uh uh, an assortment of some photos, some people that have already bought them. Both times that I made uh, trial runs, I, I went to the bar with them and sold them out each night. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely be looking to push that a lot further as well. And then you still have the face musher stuff. I have those too. Yeah, I can always I love make a that stuff. shirt as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's like walking contradiction because my whole like last few years of my life has been about being calm, not fighting, not not acting, reacting out of emotion, and then I show up in Winnipeg and decide to just digress back about five years and be like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to act completely irrationally, and due to my own disappointment in my. <laughs>
I'm going to take it out on this guy and see if I can entice him for a fight. Because if I punch him out, I can feel good. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. And I thought, well, you know what's a better way to handle it? Let's make a clothing line. So, yeah, those are also available as well. If anybody wants to message me, I can easily have one of those made up, too. Those are dope. I love that, man. I'm excited for uh, this other shit. I'll definitely post everything in the description because this will probably get released in like two weeks or something. Yeah, 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 definitely. You can definitely tag like the Facebook. Like I haven't uh, really decided too much yet about whether or not I will create like a, a fan Facebook thing or what I'll most likely do is is work more towards like a personalized website. But for now, yeah, you can catch me at AJ Jaritsma on Facebook, on Instagram or AJ.rap on Snapchat where with that one, uh, basically, uh, I created that account specifically for when I'm traveling to basically, you know, like showcase wherever I'm at, you know, so there'll definitely be some cool stuff on there as well for as much as, you know, for people that want to catch things in the moment of, right? Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. All right, well, I'll let you get to the bar and get your drink on. <laughs> yeah, I've arrived here now. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, I appreciate you doing it, man. It's fucking awesome talking to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, same to you, buddy. We got the link up to uh, uh, very soon. Get a little, couple beers and whatnot. Fuck yeah, man. That'd be dope. I'm going to need you to end this thing because I don't know how. All right. Love you, dude. Peace out. <laughs> right, much love, brother. Thanks a lot.